In this video we're going to see how we can add captures to our forms in Django applications in order to help prevent automated signups from things such as bots. Adding a capture can prevent these bots from accessing and registering for your sites and it can help protect your database by preventing non-desirable data from being entered into that database. So let's get started. In this video we're going to take a look at two different packages that we can use for captures in Django and one of them is called Django Simple Capture and the other one that we'll look at a bit later in the video is one called Django Recapture. Now Django Simple Capture is the first one and that is, as the name implies, a very simple way to provide these captures in our Django forms. If we scroll down to the readme, it's a simple but highly customizable application that allows you to add these capture images to a Django form. We're going to start with this package and we'll move on to the more modern Django Recapture package a bit later in the video. If you only want to learn about that particular package, you can skip to that section of the video. So let's get started and go to the documentation for Django Simple Recapture. And in that documentation, we're going to see how to install this package. We can go to the installation section and I'll leave links to all of these below the video. And we're going to copy this pip install command. So I'm going to make the text bigger here so we can clearly see this. It's the pip install Django simple capture command. We're going to go to VS Code and I'm going to stop the Django server that I have and I'm going to paste that pip install command. So that's added the Django simple capture package to this application. What we're going to do now is just have a look at the starter code. I've added two models to this application. We've overridden the Django default user model and we've defined a subclass here by inheriting from the abstract user. So we have a user model and we also have a task model as well. And let's imagine that we want to enter tasks via a form and a task has these three fields on the model, the name, which is just a generic name for the task. We also have a status and that's a car field, but it has a selection of choices that we're going to see in the form. And these choices are defined by this status choices class. So we have not started, in progress and done as the available choices. And finally, we have a foreign key on the task model to the user model. So the task is going to be bound to the user that creates the task. So what I'm going to do in the terminal, I'm going to make that bigger and we're going to run python manage.py and I'm going to run the migrates command. And what that's going to do is it's going to generate this database.sqlite file by default. So that is now a database that we have in the project. And once we have the database, we can then run the create super user command. I'm going to give the user a name of admin and we can then create that super user that's going to allow us to log into Django's admin. So now in this Django project, we have a database and we have a single super user called admin. What we can do now is go to forms.py and within this, we're going to build a form and this is the form that we're going to add the capture to a bit later in the video. But as well as importing the forms module, what we're going to do from core.models is import that task model and we're going to build a form that we're going to call task form. So this is going to be a model form. So let's inherit from the forms.model form class and we'll define a meta inner class within that and that's going to allow us to link this form to a particular model, so the task model and we can specify what fields we want to add to the form. Now the fields are coming from the task model, so let's open models.py and when we enter a task we want the user to be able to enter the name and the status for that task but we don't want the user field because that should automatically be added on the back end and set to the authenticated user. So let's add the name and the status to the fields here. And that gives us a model form that we can then import into views.py at the top. So from the core.forms module, let's import the task form and we can add that task form to the context dictionary that's going to be passed down to this template. So let's add a key of form and we're going to instantiate the task form and pass that through so that we can access it in this template. So let's save views.py and go to the template. We have a very basic template at the moment. It just says task form in a header two tag. And we can see that on the page if we go here, just a header two, nothing interesting at the moment. We're going to add a very basic form to this template so we can specify a form element. And we're going to submit this with a post request so we can give it a method of post. I'm going to give it some bootstrap classes, so let's give it some margin on the y-axis. We'll say my4, which will give it margin in both directions on the y-axis, and we can close off that form. And now we can add the code for the form, and because it's a post request, it's going to need to use the CSRF token from Django. 
in order to send that token along with the data so that we know and Django knows that it's a securely submitted form. Now, in order to render the form that we have in the context, I'm just going to use this here. I'm going to say form.asp and that's going to render each field in the form in paragraph tags. Very simple render of that form. And then finally, we can create a button and it's going to be of type submit. And again, some bootstrap classes just to make it look a little bit better than the defaults. I'm going to give it the button and button primary classes and inside the button we'll give it the text of submit. So let's save the template and let's go back to the page here and refresh the page. When we refresh the page, nothing's going to happen and that's because I've forgotten to start the Django server. So let's run the Django development server and go back to this page and refresh again. And now we can see the form. Now, of course, if we submit this form, nothing is going to happen at the moment because in our views.py file, we don't have a post handler here. We don't, we're not handling the post request. It's simply rendering the empty form to the template. Now we're not going to bother handling the post request at the moment. What I'm going to do is go to the forms.py module and we're going to add the capture field to this form. So we already installed the package Django simple capture using this pip install command. There are some other setup instructions that we need to do here though. We need to add capture to the installed apps. So let's go back to settings.py in VS Code and we're going to add capture at the bottom of the installed apps module here. And once we've added capture to that list, what we're going to do is go back and again, we need to run the migrate command. And that's because this package is going to add some database tables in order to work properly. So let's run migrate and that's going to add, as you can see, a couple of migrations there. And those are now in the underlying database. And the final step, going back to the documentation again, is to add some patterns to our URL patterns. So I'm going to copy this line of code. And we're going to go back to urls.py and that's going to be the project url conf and underneath this include statement i'm going to paste that in and finally we're ready to go back to forms.py and we're ready to add what's called a capture field to this form so in order to add that we need to import it so from capture.fields i'm going to import the capture field and then we can take that field and we can add a field called capture directly to this model form and instantiate the capture field and then add that to the fields in the meta class. So we now have a capture field on this form. It's available in the fields and therefore it should be shown on the form in the front end. Let's test that out and go back to our page. I'm going to refresh this page and this time, and again, I think I've forgotten to restart the server. Sorry about that. Let's restart the server and we're going to go back to this page and refresh the page. And this time we see this very simple capture field. So if you only need a very simple capture, this is going to work fine for you. It's a very basic example and you can see it's four characters here that you can type into the capture field and then that will be validated in the back end when you call the form is valid function. We'll see that later in the video with the Django recapture library but it works the same way as normal form handling in Django. Now this capture field can help prevent the basic attempts by bots to register with your website by forcing them to enter that capture and that might not be readable to the most basic bots. The problem is that machine learning and AI have advanced so much that these types of basic fields are no longer going to protect your site from more advanced bot attacks. So if you only need a simple capture, this will work fine. It gives you that very small extra level of security. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at recapture. And recapture, as it says here, it protects your website from fraud and abuse without creating friction. And it uses an advanced risk analysis engine and adaptive challenges to keep malicious software from engaging in abusive activities on your website. And this service is provided by Google. I'll leave a link to this page below the video. What we're going to do is we're going to go to this admin console at the top here. And this is where we can add a new site and then therefore add a capture that's linked to that site. And we can give it a label, which I'm going to call Django test here. And we have a recapture type just below that. So here we have a recapture type. And there are two types that you can choose from. We have a score based type, which is version three, and that verifies requests with a score. And we also have a challenge based type, which is version two, and that uses a challenge. What we're going to do is actually select the version two. So let's select that and we're going to use the I'm not a robot checkbox. So that will validate requests by adding a checkbox into the form. Once we've selected that, we need to select some domains to which this capture can be used on. So I'm going to use localhost here. We're not deploying this application. So we can use 127.0.0.1. .0 .0 .1. 
And finally, just below that, we can tick this box and we can submit this request. And once that's submitted, you can add a recapture to your site and we have these keys that we can use, a site key, and then just below that, we have a secret key as well. So we're going to come back to these keys. What I'm gonna do is go through the documentation for Django recapture. And I'm gonna scroll down to the installation section and we have the settings here to install this package. Before we go on, what I'm gonna do just to keep things clean is uninstall the other package that we used. So that was simple capture. I'm gonna use the pip uninstall command to get rid of that package. So we can get rid of that and we can only use Django recapture in this project. And I'm also going to go to the project urls.py and remove these URLs that we added to the URL patterns. So let's now install Django recapture into the project. Let's go back to this documentation and we're gonna copy the pip install command and that's gonna run on the terminal and that's gonna bring this new package Django recapture into the project. Once we've run the pip install command, what we can do is add capture to installed apps. Now we already done that with the other package. So if we go back to settings.py, we can see that we already have a package called capture in installed apps. So we don't need to change that, but it is referencing a new package now. So you need to make sure that you've removed Django simple capture in order to avoid that kind of ambiguity about what you're importing. Now, once we've done that, again, back to the documentation, we need to add these two settings and that's the recapture public key and private key. So I'm gonna copy these and again, back to settings.py, I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and right at the bottom, I'm gonna paste these in and we're gonna replace the values here with the values that we have on the documentation for recapture. So let's copy the site key and we're gonna paste that into the first value here for the recapture public key. And then we need the private key as well. So let's go back and copy this secret key and we can paste that in to this value here. And that's the most important installation instructions for this package. We need the two keys here and we need to add capture to our installed apps within the Django settings.py file. And I'll leave links to all of these pages to sign up and get these keys in the description of the video. Once we have that, what we can do is go back to our forms.py module and from capture.fields in the previous example, we were importing the capture field, but what we need to do now is import the recapture field. And that's now from this new Django recapture package. So we're importing the recapture field and we're gonna reference that in the form instead of that capture field. So let's save forms.py and run the server again. And we're gonna go back to the web page. I'm gonna refresh this page and we're gonna see a different type of capture appearing in this form. Now we get this I'm not a robot checkbox. And you're probably familiar with this. This recapture challenge is available on so many websites now to help protect that website from bots registering and filling out forms. Now, before we fill this in, let's find a bit more information about this checkbox. It's not a simple checkbox where when you check this box, automatically you're allowed to register or submit this form. That's not exactly how this works. And we're gonna to go to this documentation that I'll link below the video. Now we have a version three of this recapture service. We're using the version two at the moment, and that's the I'm not a robot checkbox. And this will require you to click a checkbox to indicate whether or not you are a robot. And this will either pass the user immediately with no capture when you click the checkbox, or it's gonna challenge the user and try and validate whether or not they are a human. And this widget here is actually going to track what the user does before they click the checkbox. And it's gonna make a decision based on the user actions about whether or not to further challenge that user to decide whether or not they are a human. So this recapture software is gonna make a binary prediction about whether the user is or is not a human. And if it decides you might not be, it's gonna present a further challenge to the user. And that might be one of these challenges where you have to select the traffic lights in a picture or the ships that are in a picture or something like that. I'm sure you've seen that before. Now what I'm gonna do is go back to this form here and we're gonna fill the form out with some data. And then if we click the checkbox here, you can see we're getting the tick. So the application or this software thinks that we are a human being and it's allowing us to proceed and submit this form to the server. Now, on the other hand, if I refresh this page and move quite erratically and just click randomly in this page, you can see we are getting that second challenge here and we have to select the traffic lights from the image before we can actually proceed. And once we've selected them correctly, we get the tick only after we've done so. So that's the challenge that can occur if this application thinks, well, that might not be a human, that could be a bot. So let's now move on to the final part of the video. We're gonna handle 
the post request, the submission of this form. So let's go back to Django and we're going to see that it's very much a seamless operation when we have these capture fields. We don't actually need to change anything about the form submission and handling that post request. So let's go to views.py and demonstrate that now. We're going to start by checking if the request.method is equal to a post request. And if it is, we can create the form by instantiating the task form and passing the post data in and then calling the form.isValid method. And if the form is valid, what we can do is we can create the task by calling form.save and I'm going to pass commit equals false to this method. And that's because when we call the save method, we don't want to create the task in the database. Why is that? Because if we go to models.py, we have a foreign key to the user model, but that's not present in the form itself. We don't have the user as part of the fields that are being used in that form. So we need to attach the user that's authenticated when we actually create that task in the database. In order to do that, we can set the user equal to the request.user. And then once we've done that, we can call task.save and that will finally add that task to the database. Once we've done that, final thing to do in this if block is redirect the user back to the index page. And to do that, we need to import the redirect function at the top. So that handles the form when it's valid. If it's not valid, we can define an else block. And I'm just gonna copy the two statements at the bottom that are used when we have a get request. I'm gonna paste them into the else block. The only thing we need to change is the form that's in the context. We're gonna use the form that was created on line seven above here with the user's data. We want to add that form with its errors to the context and re-render the index page. So let's go and test this out on the page. If we go back to this page, when we add some details here for the name and the status, and then we select this checkbox, again, we're being presented with the challenge. This time it's fire hydrants. So let's select a couple of those and verify. Now we can submit this and I think we're gonna see an error when we do so. And that's because we are not logged into the application, but we are trying to assign a user to this task. So we can't do that because we don't have an authenticated user here. Now, in order to prevent this, what we're gonna do is import the login required decorator, and that's from the django.contrib.auth.decorators module. And then we can decorate this view function with the login required decorator. And this time when we try and access the page, we are not gonna be able to actually get to the page in the first place because we need to be logged in in order to submit this form or even to access the form. Now in order to log in, I'm gonna to go to the Django admin and that super user that we created at the start of the video called admin, I'm gonna log in with that user and that gives us a session in Django that we can then use and when we go back to this page, let me go back to the root of the application. This time you can see that we have the form, we're able to access this page because we're logged in, albeit through the admin, with this admin user. So now I'm gonna select a task here and let me select learn Python as the task and that status is in progress and we can tick the checkbox. And again, we're being presented here with this challenge. So let's select all of these crosswalks and verify. We can submit the form and this time it seems to have worked. Well, something's come back here. We've been redirected back to the index page. If we go to the Django admin and go to this tasks model, you can see we now have a task object in the database and that has the name of Learn Python and also the status of in progress. And you can see that that is actually attached to the admin user. And that's because of this line of code that we've added here on line 11, just below the save method when we pass commit equals false, we're assigning the request.user into this task. So the captcha gives us that layer of protection and we cannot submit this form without filling the captcha in. If we try and do that, we're getting this basic message saying the field is required. Of course, you can style all of this however you like using CSS or using a framework like Bootstrap or Tailwind CSS. So that's all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to the channel. If you're enjoying this content, please consider buying the channel a coffee. There's a link in the description and we'll see you in the next video.